You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be doing our top 10 wrestlers of 2017. Who had the best <coughs> year? Uh, the WWE were yes. talking, I should say. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so, let's start out with number 10, The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro. Yes. Um, they had a, a pretty much a breakout year with because um, when they first started as a team... They kind of just felt like a like a fill in kind of like mm. placeholder team. Um, Not and, a team that you would think would have gotten on the same page so quickly and then dominated for quite some time. Yeah, um, this didn't take place in 2017, but at the very end of 2016, they toppled the New Day mm -hmm. for uh, to to break their streak of like 500 plus days so I think. 400 or something it was, it was a long time it was a while yeah <laughs> um so they took that from them and then pretty much a good amount of time over the course of uh 2017 they held the tag titles yep um, having feuds with the hardys and then the shield yeah. and they've been a main spotlight for mm -hmm. raw for a while now they they went into wrestlemania as champions right yeah okay or no, the where's the club? The club definitely did. No. no, they weren't even that match. I think were they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, it was the Hardys, the club, Enzo and Cass, and, and the bar. Bar, yeah. Okay. Um. Then, like we said, we had they had the good feud with um, with the Hardys, Hardys for yep. a couple months, mm -hmm. and for the last six months or so, it's been them and um, S Seth and Dean, which yeah, is so. now Seth and uh, Jason Jordan. Yeah, and they would just been that was the tag team division for. Bro. the long stretch of time so and it's been their go-to so they had a very yeah. very strong showing especially for two superstars who were pretty much floundering mm -hmm. for the most part Seamus yeah. being a lot worse off than cesaro but cesaro really wasn't doing anything either no <clears throat> all right oh. uh, number nine roman reigns i know what you're thinking nobody likes roman reigns or a lot of people don't um but considering <laughs> the fact that he really didn't have too much going on this year he was still involved in a lot of like big things yeah like his match with the undertaker at mm -hmm. wrestlemania his match with john cena at no mercy yep so so despite the fact that he wasn't involved with like the universal title picture too much which was a good thing yeah um he still had some very he, strong moments he was booked well but not overbooked yes so you know how he should be and booked. that's kind of our list it's how well people were booked yes that is it. So, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Number eight, Neville. Yeah, the uh, the king of the cruiserweights certainly made an impact. Mm -hmm. He basically made 205 Live watchable. Absolutely. Um, he took, well, first of all, his character as just Neville was very one-dimensional. There mm -hmm. wasn't a whole lot of stuff going on. He was just nope. a generic baby face. And then he mm -hmm. comes into 205 Live as he, the heel and he just the king of the cruiserweights. He absolutely just re, he transformed his character into something that you know you actually wanted to follow what was going on. Absolutely, yeah. No, and his he had great feuds, mm -hmm. great matches. It it was just an all around well built character. Yeah. So basically, he took, well, he he lived up to his potential basically because yeah. yeah. he was always a good wrestler, mm -hmm. but his character work was not really there. But now that was, I guess, he was given the platform. To really show what he could do. Yeah. So it was uh, it was good stuff from Neville. Hopefully they figure out whatever is going yeah. on with them. He can come back in 2018 and maybe even be a mainstay on the main roster. It's definitely possible. Yep. They seem to be trying to integrate the two of them now. So. Yeah. Number seven, Asuka. Yes. Um, the Empress of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, she had, well, she's still going on with her undefeated streak since yep. entering NXT. Um, she had great title defenses at um, at the, the takeovers over close to the year. I think at the takeover Houston, she fought Billy Kay and Peyton Royce mm -hmm. for the title. She had great matches with Ember Moon yep. at takeover Orlando and, and Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, <clears throat> and then the, was it a fatal four way at takeover Chicago? Yeah, because I think it was Peyton Royce. Nikki yeah. Cross, Ember Moon. Ember Moon wasn't in it because she was hurt. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, and it, either that was a triple threat. I can't Maybe remember. Was... I can't remember who the fourth one would be. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't remember. But she had really good uh, title matches. She was very dominant. Mm -hmm. She left NXT on a very high note. 
Yeah, and there was so much that WWE could screw up with her, and they didn't. Mm -hmm. They poked her very strong. That was it. They didn't really put her into positions where it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for her to be doing that. Mm -hmm. They turned her into a very convincing heel in NXT without even really needing to do a whole lot. And the character work easily outshines the fact that her English is not great up to po- yeah, yeah yeah great and everything like that mm-hmm. um yeah there's not much to say about it. yeah and even on her during her main roster tenure within the last few months she's been she's, a force to, i mean yeah. everybody knows who she is yeah. everyone's afraid of her mm-hmm. she's been putting on the competitive matches have been good and then pretty much everything else has been a squash match yeah. So they really have been doing everything spot on, and there's a definitely good chance that she wins the Royal Rumble. Absolutely, coming up at the end of the month. So, number six, AJ Styles. Yeah, the man started out 2017 as the champion and ended 2017 as the champion. Even though it was a different uh, reign, rain, he uh, he still had a very good year. Yeah, it's it's a shame that we couldn't really put him higher up. But unfortunately, he spent the large majority of 2017 kind of not in the title picture. Well, in the feud with Owens, once Shane got involved, Owens and Shane was the the main the point. spotlight yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I meant like the WWE t- oh, championship. Just, yeah, he was completely he, out. He, of- he lost the title, and then he was pretty much completely out of it. He was yeah. in that elimination chamber match mm-hmm. that Bray won. He had nothing to do with the world title picture with when Randy Orton was Nope. Well, actually he feuded with Orton, kind of. Very, very But very that was brief. that was just him having matches in place of his mm-hmm. when his feud with right. Shane. Shane was over, yeah. <clears throat> so And then but, his feud with Owens lasted too long, yeah, it felt like. The US title feud wasn't great. He had a very good showing in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Mm-hmm. He had a pretty good post Owens US title reign. Yeah. That that wasn't bad with him and Corbin, um, mm-hmm. and then of but course, then, as soon as that was over, he went right back into the main event yeah. scene. Yeah, and the, his feud with Jinder was probably Jinder's best. Wow, but that's not really saying a whole lot. So, like, we would normally like to put AJ much higher on this list, mm-hmm. but he just didn't have quite the year that he had the year before. Right. So, but, number yeah. six, it is. Yes, <laughs> number five, Kevin Owens. This. <laughs> The middle of the list is perfect for Kevin. Yeah, because it's funny because he had a great year. He started the year as the Universal Champion, yep. held it until March. Mm-hmm. Um, he was when after that he was in the huge storyline with Jericho. Yep, the feud there mm-hmm. went right into the U.S. title feud with AJ, then into Shane, and that's been the main focus of SmackDown since what the end of August. Yeah, and it, it's funny because none of this was really <clears throat> like a standout thing. But he's just always involved in major storylines. Well, he's like that player on the team that does all the little things that mm-hmm. yeah. makes he, everything he, good. Because him and Jericho, that was the feud on Raw. Mm-hmm. And he's been, like you said, the, it's the main story on SmackDown right now. Yep, absolutely. And he's just been the go-to guy. He's in tons of matches. He probably wrestles just as much or if not more than everybody else. Yeah. Because he's probably on all the house shows. Mm-hmm. And Oh, absolutely. So he he's definitely definitely showing what Kevin Owens is all about. Mm-hmm. So Number four, the Usos. Yeah. Um, we, we have just so many good things to say about the Usos. And, and it's, 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 it's funny because refreshing. neither of us really cared about them before nope. this year. Um, they won the tag team titles... I want to say early this year. Yeah, I think it was early. Because they, they took them from uh, American Alpha. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't. I want to say maybe it was Elimination Chamber that they took them. Yeah, that's that's fun. And good. they've had them pretty much consistently off, since. Yeah. Off and on trading back between them and the New Day, but yeah. that's about it. And they had a great feud with the American Alpha feud was good too. Mm-hmm. Um, the New Day was on was our top feud of the year. Yep um check out the video if you're uh, interested in the other ones yes um and, and, and on our match of the year they were yes in the, the, they're hell in a cell three. match with um with the new day. new day yep um but yeah the usos completely transformed that that the, was all all it needed was yeah. a realistic character yeah rather than their tribal yeah nonsense 
But yeah, that that obviously started at the end of 2016. It, it's but. funny. That's almost like a gimmick that worked way back when, mm -hmm. and then doesn't work now. That's, and then they took it and put it into a real person. Yeah, well, that's just what they. A lot of gimmicks worked back in the day. Mm -hmm. They don't work now. True. So just because those over the top ones just aren't realistic. No. And but we want some realism with our fake stuff. <laughs> it's true, but you know it, it feels more relatable. No, absolutely. Brings us to number three, Braun Strowman. Yeah. Um, There's so many good things to say about Braun. Yeah. Um, he he wasn't necessarily, like, the focal point at any nope, point in time. didn't have any championship reigns. But he still managed to become a guy that just beats up jobbers to being the probably one of the most over people in the company. Right. Um, he gets a huge pop every time it comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He always comes in and he just destroys people. Uh, he's just had a great year. And again, it, we uh, he was in the one of the feuds of the year with uh, Roman. Roman, yeah. yeah. Um, the two of them put on great matches over the course of like five months, maybe. Yeah, they were involved a lot, and you know he's been in two title matches. He was in the title match with. Um, at SummerSlam and then yep. at No Mercy. Yeah, which was probably his lowest point of the year, was losing the Universal title match. Yeah, but still, Braun comes out on a weekly basis and just lays wreckage to everybody. So, yeah. And like I said, he managed to create a character that people actually want to cheer. Right. And that's not very easy for a big guy like that. No, no, no. He's been definitely a person they can rely on mm -hmm. to be a top face honestly on a show that's faces are needed yeah it's true so uh so yeah braun Strowman had a great 2017 and i'm assuming he's gonna have an even better 2018 mm -hmm. that brings us to number two the miz yes because he's awesome <laughs> yes he is um a couple of years ago no one would have thought that the miz would be anything especially in a, a day where AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, all these guys from the outside came mm -hmm. in and t started taking up all the spots. But ever since the Superstar Shakeup, the Miz has kind of just taken the ball and run with it. Yeah, but even before that, with when like we talked about earlier, was his feud with John Cena? Oh, this year, you mean? Yeah, yeah. No, well, oh, I, was, I was talking about. I meant the draft. Draft. Not okay. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, because. Just <clears throat> since the the extension where you had people or the separate shows, now the Miz had more time and he used it and he was one of the bigger names now. Right. Um, but yeah, the feud he had with John Cena, that went from a why are they doing right. that to a this is a great feud. Yeah. The Miz was able to kind of bring it, you know, comedic style to his. Yeah. They they took advantage of the fact that there was a show about. Uh, Nikki Bella, mm -hmm. and then they used it to to their advantage. Yep, and it was just great writing. He played a great part, in, or I should say, he he was a good counterpart to John Cena because generally speaking, John Cena just comes in and rips everybody apart. But oh, at least yeah. it felt like the Miz was on equal footing mm -hmm. at points. Yeah, um, he had a great feud with Dean for a long, long time. Period, yeah, because when the two of them came over from SmackDown. We, and they continued their feud. Yeah. And we're like, why are they even bothering? Well, it was a major storyline story on SmackDown. It there. was. Yeah. And and at first we thought, oh, okay, I guess they're just going to end the feud. But right. they kept it going, and mm -hmm. it still worked. Well, it was, it was kind of like uh, the bar and the shield. It's just kind yeah. of the go-to thing that yeah. you're comfortable with that works. Mm -hmm. And he created the Miz Taraj mm -hmm. with uh, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Yep, he took two people that weren't doing anything and made them relevant. Yeah, and now they're on the show every mm -hmm. week, even though he's not around. Well, that's the thing. There was always some section of Monday Night Raw that was penciled in for the Miz. Uh, there was a lot. Yeah, a that's lot true. There was. It was. Yeah, he was probably one of the few people that was in multiple segments every week. Yep, him and Maurice were like mm -hmm. at least. Uh, there were points in time where at least. An hour of the show had The Miz involved. Yeah. If not mm -hmm. on screen entirely. Yep. Yeah, and then he was with The Shield, you know, mm -hmm. that whole storyline. Yep. So that was main spotlight for him. So he just completely took over as the mm -hmm. the guy on Raw, more or less, especially with the absence of 
with uh, with the absence of the universal title yeah, picture. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the Intercontinental Champion was definitely the top champion on the show. Yeah, so Miz was definitely the mm-hmm. probably the best, like, taking advantage of the, the situation he's in. Mm-hmm. And uh, that brings us to number one. Yeah, this was... Uh... This was a pretty easy choice, actually. It's true, when you think about it. Number one, Alexa Bliss. Yeah. So we talked about this before the show, and she maybe had 40 days of the year where she wasn't champion. Mm -hmm. She was the first Raw and SmackDown champion, and then also two-time champion of both shows. Yep. Um, And she's just done such great character work. Uh, She came in as a nobody from NXT, and just made a name for herself yeah the fact that when she got called up both of us thought what are they doing right and now she's the most she's not the most dominant but she's the most or like the best performer Mm -hmm. on the women's roster because she cuts great promos you believe her Mm -hmm. and she 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 knows her character so well yeah and she's she's become really good in the ring Mm -hmm. and she has great matches with like some of the the more experienced wrestlers. Yep. Um, and she's still very young. Yeah. Which is a sure what mid twenties, right? I think she's twenty five or twenty six. Yeah. So Crazy. she's got a lot of time. Um, but like you said, there was like a little over a month of the entire year where she wasn't a champion. Yeah. Because she lost the title, the SmackDown title to Naomi at the Elimination Chamber, and then won it back like a week and a half later. Yeah, it was like nine days, something like because, that. Because uh, Naomi had to uh, relinquish it. <clears throat> and then she lost it at WrestleMania, went over to Raw, and won it like two weeks after going to Raw. Yep. Uh, at Payback against Bailey. And the only time she dropped it was to Sasha Banks, and, and then won it for, back, what, the next week? It, or yeah, because it wasn't, it wasn't the next day. It was the next week. Yeah. Um, and then she's had it ever since. She's yeah. had great feud. She had a good feud with Mickey James not too long ago. Mm-hmm. The only really low point she had was her feud with Bailey right. with the whole this is your life nonsense. Mm-hmm. And that yeah, had nothing to do that, with her. That could have damaged her a lot. Too, it could have, but, but, you know, she yeah. stuck with it. And the funny thing is that Alexa has only wrestled a handful of matches in the last couple of months. Oh, on yeah, she's, Raw. she's not involved in everything. No. She spends more time on commentary, but mm-hmm. that's where she shines. Right. She's so good. The character, yeah, it's yeah. her character, and she interacts with the commentator so well. Because mm-hmm. a lot of the times they have, they try to get other people to do it, and they just can't. Yeah, it's very weird and awkward. Yeah, it, and... yeah. like a good example is Naomi. Mm-hmm. They they had her do that during her title reign on SmackDown, and it just it felt like she was just Why? told to say things yeah. that weren't organically mm-hmm. infused into the conversation. Yep. But Alexa Bliss, bar none, was definitely the standout the, performer of, of the year. 2017. Yep. So that was our top 10 WWE superstars who had the best 2017. Yes. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you feel like it, you can always add a comment in the comment section and tell us what you think. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.